Hi. So just a day or so ago, friend of the channel, Epos Vox, reached out to me um, to help him with trying to achieve a certain kind of motion in his animation. Eternal motion. The kind of thing you're seeing on screen now, a repeating pattern that just goes on and on and on. Now, if you were in a confined space or a normal production environment, you could achieve any sort of linear motion like this just with two keyframes. So what happens when you want to set up a move with an indeterminate length? If you want to have something moving at a set speed with the full freedom to extend that clip as long as you need it. That's the problem we're going to solve. This pattern has been moving for a little while, but it only exists with two keyframes, but those two keyframes are in just the beginning few seconds of this move. There are a few different ways to achieve this, but we're gonna use one method that is so simple. I'm really excited to show it to all of you. Let's get started. All right, I am here in DaVinci Resolve on the edit page and I've already created a little timeline over here, full HD, 30 frames a second, and I'm just going to grab a fusion composition from our effects library, drag it onto our timeline, and press this button down here to jump into the fusion page. All right, here's our fusion page layout. We have our one media out. And as always, whatever we do on the fusion page, we will pipe into this to send it back to the edit page. So the first thing I am going to do to recreate that layout we had on our previous scene is to just create a normal background node here. And I'm gonna make this a nice sort of teal. I will preview this by pressing two to bring it up here. Something like this, great. I'm going to add a ellipse mask here will make it a circle. And even though this circle will be small, I'm gonna keep this this size here because coming out of this background node, I'm going to create a transform node, add it there. And I'm gonna use one little trick that I've touched on a few other times. Um, it's, it's one of the first really cool things I found in Fusion and I, I still love it. Inside this transform, we're gonna make sure we're previewing that by pressing two. I'm gonna come down to edges and I'm going to turn on wrap. And then I am going to pull down this size until we have an entire uh, field of this shape. I might actually bring it up a little bit. Yeah, there. And I'm gonna bring down the size of this orb just a bit so we have a little more separation between the top and the bottom. Now in my demonstration, I just had a band of these, but I did some other stuff to that, or I will do it. I haven't actually made it yet. But this is a simple way to demonstrate what we're going to do here. Now, this whole process is especially useful because of how presets and templates work in Resolve. You can make a pattern like this, even an animated pattern, and turn that into a generator that you can always access as a uh, drag and drop effect on the edit page. And if you have continuous motion, then you can drag and drop that and extend it to whatever length you need for whatever video you're working on. So I'm going to go into the transform node, come to the beginning, set a keyframe in the inspector on the center parameter, again, of the transform node. And then I'm just gonna come forward, let's say 30 frames, one second. And I'm going to either uh, drag these parameters here or also use the tactile controls in the viewer. I'm gonna click the center and just move it a little bit to the side like that. And if we scrub through, you'll see that these just move up and to the right. And you know what? I'm even going to pull up this size as well so it isn't so dense and so confusing. Great. But if we watch that, it moves and then it stops. Here's the magic. I'm going to select the transform and open up the spline viewer. I'll click displace on that transform node and then I'm going to click this button up here to zoom to fit. And if we scale out here, I'm doing this with a middle and left mouse button, holding middle mouse button moves around a bit. You see that move represented visually. Now the spline viewer has several tools to help with motion. If I select these nodes, um, I have tons of options down here. Cool things we've played with before, like step in or step out, but we also have reverse, set loop, set ping pong and set relative. If I click reverse, then it will just reverse the animation of those two keyframes. I'm gonna click that back. If I set loop, then you can even see visually what it is doing. 
it is going to move over that one second and then in that frame it is going to just jump back to where it was. It's eternal continuous motion, but of course it, it's not smooth. It's just looping that one second, which doesn't line up perfectly. So I'm gonna select those, uncheck loop, and then we have ping pong, which functions like ping pong animation. Here we have this field going up, and then in the next second, it just comes back to where it started. Cool, I'm gonna uncheck that. And the thing we are looking at, as you might've guessed, is this last one, set relative. Watch what this does in the spline viewer. I'm gonna create some room select those two keyframes here and then click set relative. And then now you see this sort of projected pink line here of this motion path is just continuing at that same pace. And now if I go back and preview my timeline, it moves over that one second, but it just keeps going afterward in the same direction at the same speed. You're seeing it loop here once it hits the end of this timeline, but as I'm about to do, I'm going to pack this up real quick into a template and show on the edit page. And there, you will be able to extend or shrink as much as you want. And no matter what length, it'll have this perfect continuous motion. First, I'm gonna connect that transform to my media out so we have a complete little scene here. And very quickly, just to demonstrate, I'm going to select all of these, right click, go to macro, create macro, which gives us this prompt. This is where you would put in a lot more control, but just to demonstrate, I'm going to name this eternal field file, save as group. You could choose save as, but save as group gives you some more flexibility if, if you like poking around like me. Save this to a location that you will be able to access quickly, click save, and then to get this on the edit page, I'm going to open the effects library, open templates, edit, select generators, and I'm gonna come up to these three dots here and click show folder. That should open up this window for you. I, I have a lot of things here. You probably don't have much, if anything, in this location, but I'm also gonna pull up a window of where I save that eternal field here, and I'm just gonna drag that in here. And there it is, and we see it. Uh, pop into the fusion page as well. Now, if we go back to the edit page, I make sure my effects library is open, go to generators. Right here, after contours in generators, we have eternal field and you can even preview that. If I drag that onto this timeline, this was the original fusion composition we created, but after this, we have our internal field. And just like the actual fusion composition, um, it goes in this location, but we can drag this out as long as we want and these will just keep moving no matter how long anything else we do. We will just have this constant motion in the background. And this is just one example, this sort of background image. But anytime you need continuous motion that you just want to set and forget, this is going to be valuable. A real quick video I just wanted to get out there for anyone else looking to achieve this kind of motion. The secret is the set relative option in the spline viewer. Thanks. I'll see you next time.